provoke themselves. People praise themselves. And they put themselves first. The current age of self-worth is known by the number of followers on your Facebook page. Amen. On your Twitter feed. And no detail of life is too mundane or too trivial for you to share with the world. Obsession with oneself is not only deemed acceptable nowadays, but some folk consider it normal behavior. Our culture has made pride a virtue and has made humility a weakness. This, this preoccupation with self, with self-promotion is unspeakably destructive. When people are committed, first of all, to self, relationships disintegrate. Friendships, marriages, and families fall apart when all you're looking out for is your self. Human pride is the root of all evil that underlies so many failed relationships. And yet our culture stubbornly and deliberately promotes Pride. Yeah. Sadly, a shameless preoccupation with self has found its way into the church. And of course, most of them are not even called churches at all, but they are really cults. Yeah. Yeah. Cults of self centeredness, cults of self aggrandizement, self of arrogance, and worldliness. And the selfish they are spreading is a whole different religion as to what Christ taught. So scripture is clear, pride and self-centeredness are hostile to true Christ-like godliness. And Jesus repeatedly and emphatically condemned pride. Both his life and teaching consistently exalted the virtue of being humble. And nowhere is that more clear than in our text here today? John chapter 13 finds us the day before the master's death. In less than 24 hours, he's going to bear the awful weight of the guilt of the world of sin that he did not even commit. He's going to suffer ruthlessly at the hands of cruel men. In just a few hours, he's going to be nailed to an old rugged cross. And fully knowing all that was coming, he's preoccupied with someone else's needs. He, he, he's immersing himself in personal ministry to these 12 men. He, 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 he's consumed because he wants to strengthen them. He, he wants to reassure them and prepare them for what they will soon have to go through. Yeah, right. And matter of fact, we all know that even one of the twelve was a traitor. But this shows the person, the self-sacrificial, if you will, the gracious nature of Jesus' love. These were literally the last hours before he would die. Yeah. Jesus knew full well all that would happen to him. But his heart was fixed on these men, yeah. his disciples. And everything he did this night demonstrated his love for them. Yeah. Beginning with their entrance into this of a room. They traveled by foot. 